What's going on, guys? My name is Julian Young. I am the host of the Blockchain Brief, where every episode we are interviewing innovators and founders in the blockchain and crypto space. Today, I am beyond excited to have three very special guests. We have Brendan Playford, the CEO of Constellation Labs. We also have Ben Jorgensen, the COO of Constellation Labs. On our end, and this is for a very first, we have Eric Pinos, our technologist in residence. So Eric is the president of the MIT Bitcoin Club and the director of operations for the Blockchain Education Network. So this is actually, guys, the most people that we've ever had on the show before. Uh, Constellation <laughs> Labs team, we are beyond excited to have you and really looking forward to hear more about the project. Thank you. Thank you, Jimmy. And that, that's really great. That's really great. So let's jump right into it, right? So kind of give us a little bit of background on yourself, uh, your team. Um, would love to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm Brendan, CEO of Constellation. I've been in blockchain since about 2013, where I kind of got exposed to it through mining. Originally got a master's in physics from University College London and just pretty enthused by the nature of blockchain and sort of make sure the academic and business side. Um, I've been in sort of the US, San Francisco for a, for a couple of years and gradually moving into the space out here. And I met Wyatt, my CTO, and Wyatt's uh, he's an ex-NASA engineer from AMC, helped work on the SETI at home distributed computing network, and then done a lot of uh, distributed data engineering at um, so like a, a subsidiary of Salesforce, Radius Intelligence, to block machine learning, uh, distributed data computation. I met him and we started working on uh, a, a constellation together. Um, we also have Altif, who's our community manager, uh, comes from, again, like a really strong background of community building and Henry, who's our sort of product engineer. We have like a, a good database or a good network of advisors and community that we've built around us. Um, and then Ben, COO, I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, my name is Ben Jorgensen. Um, I come from Indiana originally. I have to give a shout out to Indiana. Um, studied economics, anthropology, political science, and attempted to wrap those together and, uh, and then move into uh, building businesses. I uh, built several companies. Uh, most recently, I built an ad tech company from 2011 to 2015 and helped early to mid-market companies uh, excel at sales and marketing uh, accountability processes and systems, uh, which brought me into San Francisco and uh, working with companies tying their narrative into a uh, revenue um, or venture package, if you will. Fantastic stuff, guys. All right, so let's talk about the problem, right? Because I think what you guys are doing is extremely, extremely interesting. So why don't you talk about the problem? How big is the market? And then let's jump right into Constellation Labs. Yeah, that, that's really good. I'll, I'll roll with this one. Um, I, I think when we came out of sort of March last year, looking at building a potentially a DAP on Ethereum, it was very quickly apparent that we were encountering the obvious scaling issues that everyone's seeing. And there may just be a better way of doing sort of distributed consensus, distributed ledger technology, sort of smart contracts as microservices. And what we saw that existing blockchains out there were kind of moving towards uh, a more scalable solution that enabled actual business applications to be built, but they weren't there yet. And without sort of patching these technologies up with like either Casper, Raiden, Plasma, in the case of Ethereum, where there's potentially like not a clear roadmap for those. It, we decided it was easier to apply or why it had this vision for a interconnected mesh net of devices that created a DAG chain that enabled microservices and the leveraging of unused computation um, to provide a more efficient and more secure and open technology to those that we otherwise see available. And that was sort of the genesis of the idea. It's kind of grown and established from there to to be uh, a distributed ledger that's a DAG um, that then supports like JVM architecture for creating smart contracts as in a microservice architecture way, um, which allows existing infrastructure to plug in and horizontal scaling as in the more nodes you bring onto the network, the faster it can go and applying more distributed uh, engineering techniques of partitioning of consensus as opposed to sharding, which you might find in something like Zilliqa. That is quite the mouthful over here. Um, so <laughs> if, we, if we were to go in, in layman's terms, right, like let's talk about some practical use cases, right? Um, you know, talk a little bit about the token utility here and, you know, any partnerships that you might have or, you know, where would I see your technology being implemented and, and how is it different from blockchain? I think that's a big thing that I'd love to have you guys address. 
Yeah, yeah. Do you want to go for some new things? Yeah, um, I think one good example of, you know, kind of focusing on our microservices angle, you look at major companies like Netflix, Amazon, and Google, and how they leverage microservices, for almost like the modularization of engineering builds, um, and how they apply that to create these very robust and um, uh, businesses. And, and if you can, if mass the mass amount of companies out there the thousands of hundreds of thousands of businesses that are building applications in the same way can actually leverage constellations distributed operating system to build similar structures um, and and applications uh, that are congruent with what they're currently doing um, so i think that that's kind of a one use case that we all kind of look to netflix and all these big companies how do they build this how do they build this infrastructure well, we're kind of giving that ability to developers to do another kind of simple way of looking at it would be um, why why does horizontal uh, scalability matter why do dag chains matter versus traditional blockchain if you will and one example that we common use commonly use is if you have a train that pulls up to a train station and you have a thousand people all trying to get into one door versus a train at a train station and a thousand different doors what's going to be the most efficient way to get all these people on board and get the train off to the st off the station. Um, so that's kind of one way that, that we depict it. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I think one other thing I just want to add in there is sort of, in terms of the way we construct a DAG architecture, it, it really allows for a lightweight node. So in the case of Ethereum, where it's um, a completely synchronous network, where every node um, has, um, every node has, the full kind of transaction log of its history loaded onto it. A DAG in the way that uh, we're constructing it, the node hosts its own chain and double signs a transaction to then be able to kind of issue a transaction out to the network. Um, that allows for a lightweight node that can be held, you know, on your on your mobile phone. And when you start to kind of connect these um, these devices in some kind of mesh net, which we're going for, you can actually kind of scale computation across them. Um, so one of our goals here is like, if you think of uh, Africa where everyone is generally going to have maybe two mobile phones and they're quite sophisticated phones now, a lightweight node on that can actually function in a way where it can provide a certain amount of computation to a network uh, in a aggregated manner. So a, a, a cluster of phones can start to provide a computational base for um, some services. And, and that can be compensated. So with the token, you can see a situation where you almost think that it's a two-sided marketplace. You have a service wanting to use the network uh, to do some image processing, 3D rendering, uh, run a machine learning job over a bunch of devices, and then you have clusters of phones providing computational power or small devices or large devices, depending on where they fit in the network. Uh, and those people can get rewarded that. So that can, you know, we have a vision for unlocking this sort of UBI, universal basic income in these areas where small nodes can participate in the network and get rewarded for that throughput. So that's like on a computation scale and, and on consolation on a validation sort of scale for doing micropayments and transactions, those, those validations are going to be fee free. We're not going to charge any gas for that. It's, it's where you have the two, the counterparty type interaction where there is an exchange of value between service and service provider um, where we think there's, there's, there's huge opportunity here. Fantastic stuff. Eric, I'm actually going to pass this over to you because I know that you have a couple of technical questions that you want to shoot over to the Constellations team. So the floor is uh, yours. Yeah, so I guess I wanted to start with um, the idea of it being called Constellation Labs. I, I read through the, the white paper and I saw that the, the kind of peer-to-peer -peer architecture that you guys built is analogous to stars and constellations and uh, galaxies. So I was wondering if you could go into that and where that analogy where that comes into play in the architecture yeah. that you built? Yeah, I, th I think that's a really good question. So um, when we started putting this together, we pulled from quite a few sort of academic resources of, of varying um, sort of levels to come up with a consensus architecture um, and led in some other principles of taking sort of locality sensitive hash blocks of certain transactions to create transaction finality in, in sort of a DAG chain. So it's something like IOTA, let's say the DAG itself is directional, but within a lattice. In Constellation, we have these checkpoint blocks, which um, 
if you can imagine a bunch of small nodes being stars as, as phones providing validation, um, when they reach a certain point, they have this checkpoint block inserted in that uh, chain, which provides sort of a finality to all the transactions previously. Um, as we looked at the way in which devices and our vision for connected devices work, it became analogous to uh, a constellation of devices, all sort of working in unison to provide validation. And then at a higher level, um, grouping those devices together into a star cluster to amalgamate and bring together that computation at scale, very much like a spark cluster does. Um, and within a spark cluster, you kind of have a governing node that spins off additional auto scaling. And when you start looking at that's governed by a galaxy node. So a galaxy node is likely to be more powerful than a phone, have more memory, control the reputation of the delegate selection using proof of meme, and take a, an entire hash of that transaction history and, and encode that in what we call a black hole. So it, we felt that the methodology of using low level computation to provide validation with then sort of tiers of uh, subnets almost of, of varying compute computational capacity was, was really nicely analogous with this vision of a, an interconnected world, uh, bringing devices together to provide computation at scale in a, in a constellation as it were. Um, and that sort of seemed to flow through as a nice narrative uh, and helps, I think, understand the, the Hyla chain architecture, which is what, we're, what Wyatt has kind of envisaged and, and is building, building out. Cool, cool. I'd also like to uh, bring up uh, your consensus mechanism. So, you know, there's proof of work, which kind of lends itself to kind of this vertical natural centralization where people have more electricity, more access to electricity, have more power. Proof of stake, where people that have more tokens have more power. You guys seem to have come up with a different model, which, is, uh, if I'm correct, is called proof of meme and reputation-based, uh, could you go into that? Is that meme like the internet meme, or what, what do you mean by proof of meme? It's, it's a really interesting question. It's, it's kind of funny because we've been challenged a few times potentially on changing it because it could be a bit tongue-in-cheek, but <laughs> the, way that, the way that Wyatt and we sort of view meme is like Richard Dawkins' definition of it's a person's sort of manifestation of, of everything that makes them up, right? So in the case of a node participating network, Proof of reputation is, is, is a group of characteristics that make up what that node does. Is, is it acting poorly? Is it hosting a microservice that has like a certain uptime in SLA? Is it validating transactions or is it trying to do something nefarious? And going back to this idea of opening up the, opening up smaller devices to the potential of reward is democratizing even further computational power and the ability for other people to onboard into a network, right? So if you look at the way that proof of work has somehow brought about the centralizer, this verticalized centralization and proof of state being very kind of plutocratic, we feel the natural evolution in delegate selection is to one where we truly reward good actors on the network and, and anyone can participate as long as they contribute value to the network. And that value may be high uptime, it might be high bandwidth, it might be high computational power, it may be you have validated 1,000 reliable transactions. And we use this model called regret, which um, takes into account three dimensions of uh, variables that build up a reputation score. Um, and that is then clustered using a cluster algor our clustering algorithm to select each participant. And it is very new, it is very novel, and we're augmenting that with validator awards for a certain period of time while we fully test that model and we're doing a, a formal verification of it with some academic people at the moment and we'll be releasing that with our test net. Um, we just felt like it was a, a really nice natural step forward in a new way of doing delegate selection that wasn't uh, DPoS or proof of stake or all of these things whereby truly a behavior, you know, an actor's behavior in an ecosystem to find their uh, selection and the reason why they should participate. Um, and by using a clustered algorithm with sort of a temporal page rank selection over it, there's a higher potential of selecting reputable nodes than what there are, like a zero reputation, somebody coming onto the network as new. However, there'll still be a small amount of selection from this bucket that allows people to progress, as it were, into becoming a, a more reputable node on the network. Cool. Awesome stuff, guys.
Eric, we got to get you and Wyatt on a, on a call as well. Cause I feel like all the two of you will be able to jam about this for hours. So yeah, just, in, 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 just to be, <laughs> just to be, be conscious of our time here. Uh, cause I know that you guys got to jump in a little bit and we want to try to keep this below 15 minutes. Um, would love to have you share a little bit more about like how far along are you guys with the project that you're working on? Um, any partnerships, any people that are looking to build on top of your platform, uh, just key milestones that you feel comfortable sharing with all of us. Yeah, um, so on the engineering side, we've, we've already started building the technology we've been building for quite a while right now. We have nodes auto scaling. Uh, we're getting ready to release our test net in June uh, with a main net release in, uh, in Q4. Um, we're bringing on uh, four engineers this coming month, uh, which is extremely exciting. Uh, they've been working closely with the project for several months now. Uh, so it's great to be able to bring them on full time. Our head of marketing is coming on board uh, starting Monday, and we're actively building out a very aggressive business development program that focuses on alliances with individuals like Eric in the academic world uh, to enterprise world, um, and also building out an ecosystem that invites dApps uh, and applications to build on this kind of third generation blockchain. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, and so would you mind just briefly talking a little bit about your token generation event? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're aiming to have our, our actual TGE in, in April. Uh, and we're currently sort of working through some good models to bring about really good community distribution. Um, and uh, currently working through sort of the current frameworks in terms of how we do that best. Um, and we're going to be, at the moment, we're not, uh, announcing any details probably for the next sort of three to four weeks, but expect to be able to let the community know exactly when that's going to be. And we, we do fully intend to have a TG with the community involved because we think it's very important to get that engagement, very important that uh, users of the platform get access to the token so they can come in and interact. You know, we want to, we want to, we're building a developer portal where people can access that and get rewarded using Constellation tokens or building features. So it's really important for us to uh, get that uh, event into the right hands of, of actual users of the platform. So we're moving towards that in, we, we, we expect April time if we can accelerate that timeline we're going to um, and uh, really want to do that to support the community and, and do it in the best way possible we can. Great stuff. Well, Ben, Brendan, absolute pleasure having you guys here today. Eric, thank you again for joining us. Is there anything else that you guys would like to share before we sign off? Uh, I think it's been a, it's been an absolute pleasure, and it's it's you know I'd love to get Wyatt on on a call with with Eric at sometimes, but it's been really really great speaking to you both. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, Eric, Julian, thank you for the great questions and letting us uh, some time to ch chat about what yeah. we're doing. We're extremely excited about what we're building, and we have an amazing community that we're excited to roll out some cool things. Yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful for that community. Yeah. We really are too. Trust me. We're very, very excited to track the progress and what you guys are building. We think it's very, very incredible stuff here. Um, awesome guys. Well, thank you again for joining us and uh, looking forward to being in touch very soon. Thanks thank you very much. much. Cheers, Mark. Thanks.